In this Friday Rewind, we're going back and revisiting North Alabama's 26-17 football win over Western Illinois in the home opener. UNA head football coach Chris Willis is set to rewatch this game with us, abbreviated version of it. Coach Willis, let's set the stage heading into this ball game. It was our first year in the Big South, first year playing a full FCS schedule, the first Division I home game in some time, I think since 1992. Year one, we had a lot of unknown. Now heading into year two, what, what sort of feeling do you remember having heading into this ball game? You know, it just is so hard. So many of them run together, but I do go back to, I just remember being, you know, the biggest thing that stood out to me was it was a Thursday night contest. And that not only that, it was one of the only few games being played that night. And I think we were viewed on ESPN Plus and, you know, we draw a crowd for over 10,000 people. And, you know, it just had that – it was almost that feel that we were one of the, one of the only teams or us in Western Illinois were some of the only teams playing. And, uh, and it kind of showed that when you look at the stats of how the viewership was on ESPN Plus. But I just – yeah, just the, the first home game, just the first Division One home football game, I thought was probably the biggest thing you can take away from that. And – and there was a lot of firsts, but and I think we that was the first time we wore gold pants. I think, uh, I know they didn't wear them in the 90s, so you might I'd have to go back and look at the day, but it might have been in the 80s. I know, you know, so just uh, I think the thing that stood out to me was the fact that it was a, just a Thursday night game. It had been a while since we'd played, I, I think, a Thursday night home game as well. I don't remember in Coach Wallace's tenure. My five years under him, if we played a Thursday, not, not, you know, it might have been one, but I can't even think of that. I know we go back. Uh, to Coach Bowden, I know we had some Thursday night games, but no, nah, just uh, listen. I'm a big fan of Thursday night football. I think small college football from FCS down to D2, D3, whoever. I think we need to play more Thursday night football games. I mean, Saturdays just got so many games as it is, and you know, you 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 get kind of bumped around in different time slots, and depending on if you're on the road or at home. So I, you know, I think Thursday night would be a great night to play a uh, football at Raleigh. Coach, let's jump into the film room. And, and the first thing that jumps out as Western Illinois kicks off, and you just touched on this, is the gold pants. Purple helmets, purple tops, gold pants. Take us through how the gold pants came to be. Well, you know, the, you, we get in a lot of debate here. Um, what are the actual school colors? I think we're not – nobody's going to deny it. You know, purple is one of them. There's without a doubt. It, purple is the school colors. And, uh, and then there's always been the second color seems to be gold. And then you're always going to have – I don't know how you have a uniform without some trim of white. I don't think we list white as a color, but, I mean, you're always going to have some version of white, some version of purple, and you hope to find the right gold. You know, the thing, sometimes when you do gold, you can do too much of it and it doesn't look right. Um, you got to do the gold that is the standard gold now, which I think is called Vegas gold. Uh, it's not the old uh, LSU uh, athletic yellow gold. And so you just got to be careful when, you know, certain uh, companies, whether it's Adidas or Nike, you got to make sure you're flowing with the jerseys and the, and the helmet color. And so we just try, you know, my tenure here, and I've been here a long time, so I've seen every look UNA's had for the most part. And I try to do a lot of things, to, you know, to go to the throwback. You know, I'm, I'm big on, you know, the old line decal that they used to wear. And I did the stars for the championship run. And then we, we honored the team for, I think, it was 1960. I, I might have my year wrong here, Ben. It might have been 68. I think it was the, when we had the F on the helmet. I had to look up to see here. Uh, and then, you know, uh, there, there was the air. You know, if you remember when Hud took the job, Coach Hudson was here and I got hired. We had the O U and A with the claw through it. And that's something we're looking at to explore. So, you know, I'm just big on trying to, to do some throwback stuff. I mean, uh, you don't see a lot of gold today. It's so hard to match up. But uh, I just thought that was pretty neat to, to break out. I thought the key, you know, it's about what these players want. At the end of the day, what makes them feel good? I, I let them have a voice, and they, they came to me over the summer. Hey, coach, can we get some gold pants? You know, and then you'll ask them, hey, what about a gold jersey? But nobody jumped on the gold jersey. I don't think they like that. And you know, we're exploring different options with the helmets. We'd like to maybe go to a gold helmet sometime. So I'm I'm whatever these guys, these these young guys out there on the field, they whatever they want. Coach, we just saw the. Fumble on the punt by Western Illinois. UNA would recover right here. First touchdown of the game. Christian Lopez takes it in. But that first special teams play, just how much did it spark the team? Well, you know, you see, 
it set it set up the first score. And uh, I tell people all the time, the first games, the first week games, second week games, if you'll watch, if you sit down and watch them, and uh, you'll see that special teams ends up being the difference in the first games. You know, you get so caught up out here in fall camp, you want to make sure you're in shape. You want to make sure you got your depth chart uh, when you're running your plays, who's catching the ball, who's running the ball, who's tackling, who's covering. You put so much emphasis on offense and defense because, you know, special teams, you're not out there on the field as many uh, reps of special teams. But we, we put a lot into special teams here. We always try to gain an advantage. And uh, I told the guys, I said, there will be plays throughout this game that the special teams is going to be the difference. You, you talk about that play, he fumbled, and he look up, and, you know, we, our kicker ends up kicking two 40-yard field goals or so that night. And so it's just, uh, man, week one and two, your special teams are always going to be a little rough, a little bit. You need to work some things out in week one and two. It gets better as the year goes. But if you can be ready to go week one and two with your special teams, it can win you a ball game. Joe Gurley's 48-yard field goal gave UNA the 9 to nothing lead. Here's Western Illinois driving, but, Coach, the defense, the first five drives, they forced five punts from Western Illinois. I know they get this touchdown right here, but how good was the defense throughout this game? Well, I thought defensively we just had a lot of speed, and we gave those guys problems. Their old line struggled uh, with our D-line. I, I remember this game as a whole. I, you know, we can talk about they had to – they had trouble blocking Wallace Cowens and then Devontae Tolls. But at the end of the night, I think it was just the D-line as a whole, all the way across. I thought, our, you know, you look at matchups and you go, well, what position won the battle? That particular night, our D-line beat their O-line. And I thought was outside of special teams was probably the biggest plays of the game. Now, I can also flip it around the other way. I thought our O-line beat their D-line. And, um, you know, you're talking about a D-line that's – it was well known. They had a player that got drafted. Uh, they got to believe they had a player this year that got drafted or signed free agents off the D line. So I thought we won the battle up front. I thought that was the difference. An immediate response after the score. Here's Christian Lopez hitting Cortez Hall for a 75 yard touchdown strike. Yeah, I, it looks like to me there they're playing some type of man coverage. And listen, it's it's one of those feaster phantoms. I mean, you you. you he catches the ball. If you saw the play there, I mean, you got to get him to the ground. You got to make the tackle. You got to hold him up to at least get some help. When you get caught in zero coverage and no safety help, uh, you have to be a good tackling football team. And that's tough to play. I, I'm not a big fan of playing so much zero coverage, especially week one, because why? You go into the game worried about not only special teams, but you worry about tackling. And that was a one on one opportunity. Our receiver was a lot bigger than their DB. He misses the tackle. We break it, and we go the lane. We get our first introduction to Wallace Cowens right there, a big tackle. And then here's special teams the opposite way. They get the blocked punt, scoop, and score. Yeah, I mean, there you go. I mean, here's – it just, you know, it was special teams night, some big plays. We had one. They had one. You know, we don't have many uh, punts blocked here. I think this year we got two blocked, and which is – two more than we've probably had in the last four or five years combined. And so I take pride in the, the two units that you got to be really good at. you got to be really good at punt team. And you got to be really good at kickoff coverage. Uh, your two coverage units are huge. Uh, you can give up scores. You can get a punt block, you know. And so, you know, the return team, it's not that those are not important. But, you know, when you they kick you the football, you know, you just my, my thing to them guys are, hey, just catch it. Just catch it. It's our ball. We're fixing to go take offense. But you got to be really good on punt and kickoff. And in that particular night, we had to take that one clip right there, and we had to coach off of it. And I think we did really well with the punt team all the way up to – I want to say it was maybe last game of the year. Uh, there was a game in there. We get one partially blocked. So um, kudos to the coaching staff for getting those things corrected. And, Coach, we go into the halftime break, leading 19 to 14. And, and you look – we really could have not tried to score, but how big was it getting that field goal from Joe Gurley, his second from over 40 yards, that one from 42? Yeah, I believe that was with what – how much time was on the clock it then? Fired two seconds. Yeah. So, you know, that was a 42-yarder. He'd already kicked a 48-yarder. And if you look at the, the score in that game, I mean, it, you, you said it was 19 to uh, 14, I believe. You know, there was a lot of score, and it took place in that second quarter. And, uh, you know, we had the one Christian Lopez touchdown in the first quarter. But between us and them, there was some 
points put up in the second quarter. But that was huge because that was a momentum shift deal. Now, we were able to carry that into the locker room. And I believe the, all they get for the rest of the night is they get a field goal. And so it was huge. That, that's, uh, you know, we got a saying here, you know, no score on defense. Don't give up the score uh, before half under two minutes. And if you have an opportunity to get the ball uh, with under two minutes, we want to try to score. So that was one of those times it paid off for us. Charlie Ryan came up with a big third down stop to force that field goal. And throughout this second half, we're going to see a lot of different players on the defensive side step up and make plays. We are. You know, Charlie is a high motor kid. You mentioned him. He's a guy that's going to go full speed. He, he knows he, he, he may not always go where you tell him to go on the assignment, but he's going to give you great effort. Uh, the D-line, like I said, you go back to that night, you go back to the defense, but uh, – Broderick and, and Ryan Taylors, and I can't name them all because I'll forget somebody, and Devontae Tolles, I mean, Charlie Ryan. Well, they just had a really good night, disruptive. Uh, they made it very hard uh, for the offensive line. Again, Western Illinois is going to drive down the field, and when it looks like they're getting into scoring position, here's Wallace Cowens. Once again, he's going to step up in just a second after this big play and force a field goal try. And Wallace Cowens, coach, first game, he really made a big statement. Yeah, you know, Wallace is a kind of a hybrid player. At our level, he's a, he's a big defensive end uh, that comes off the edge and can rush the football, uh, rush the passer, excuse me. Um, but, you know, at, at other levels, they may use him as a stand-up outside backer. Uh, I think going to the next level in the NFL, I think that's a spot he needs to consider is an outside linebacker role. He is a, he's kind of a tweener. He's an he's a end slash – he's just a pass rusher. And you got to, you pretty much are going to have to put two people on him. You're going to have to disrupt him. You got to use our running back, a chip or something. You cannot block him one on one. And then here's the big touchdown run from Terrence Humphrey 62 yards. He would be the Big South Offensive Player of the Week. But how good was it to see Terrence after all these years really get going? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, man, I can't say enough about Terrence. Here's a guy who just has battled injuries and, you know, rotating it, running back, trying to find his way. And, you know, that was a great run. You know, I looked at that clip just to remind me, you know, once again, that was, you know, they didn't have – they had one safety deep, it looked like, right there. But they took some poor angles and were out of, you know, out of their lanes. And he just got – he got that one crease, that one open. And that just goes to show you, you know, if you block it like you're supposed to, do the things you're supposed to do up front and beat your guy. And, you know, the running back, it's on him to get to the next level to make people miss. And, he had one guy that couldn't get him down, and he, and he, you know, took off. He looked like the old Terrence. As we get ready to move into the fourth quarter, what we're about to see over these next couple of clips, there's a Jalen Dredd sack. We're about to see an A.J. Bracey interception. Roderick Martin's going to have a sack. Will Evans a third down stop. K.J. Smith a fourth down stop. There's big plays made, Coach, all by different players. Yeah, I was just sitting there, and, you know, Brady Owens be on the D-line. I just saw him. I've seen Andre Little, Dexter Boykin. It just uh, – things flowed really well that night. I mean, we started just uh, on both sides of the ball. It's almost like the fourth quarter we came together as a whole unit and started making plays. You know, there I, I see an interception right there, you know, by Bracey. And, um, you know, it, it just everything started falling in place. They kind of started panicking. They got out of rhythm of what they were trying to do. You can see, again, there's another sack. They just had trouble blocking. I think that was Broderick Martin. And so – I think they underestimated us. I think a lot of teams do that. You know, oh, here's a D2 school trying to make it in the FCS. And they don't, you know, who is that right there? I think that's Will Evans coming in on a blitz. So they they don't – I think they don't realize, you know, in the world of D2 being – sometimes you're recruiting Division One athletes. They just didn't have the grades academically to go play Division One football. They got Division One talent. And so there's K.J. Smith on the play. Speaking of K.J., he, did, he just ended with a, another – he's had a 4.0 of his entire career. I he just had it again uh, for our football team, which we had a really good semester of academics. Really proud considering what we're going through with the virus. Ron Thompson and the offense would run the clock out. Coach, you've been a part of a lot of big wins at UNA, a lot of firsts the last two years, but the first home FCS win, just how sweet was this one? I would have to put this one, you know, if I had to say, there's a lot of, just a lot of games I've been a part of, but this game and the – Southern Utah game to have back-to-back -back season where you open up the season, one on the road, one here. I would have to put them both in the same category. That was a huge win. I thought it got it kind of 
you know, I know the season didn't go with the winning record, but it just it did a lot of good for us. We're going to have to have some personal battles throughout the years until we get through this transition, and that's that's just a sign of one. Uh, hey, we we beat a team. We beat the first one at home or Division One, and a team that was good the year before. And we got to go to them. We got to go play those guys again. We're going to have to travel up there to them. I hope we have football season where we're able to go up there and play them. But you know, uh, you know, one thing about when you beat a team uh, and they're still on the schedule the next year, they they do remember that. And so uh, we just got to be ready to go. It'll be fun. We are all uh, in that phase right now. Both teams, them, us, teams on the schedule. We start looking at each other and start breaking each other down. And, you know, we're in that. We're kind of still doing our spring recruiting. Uh, that's going to kind of end here at the end of May, and it's it'll, it'll always go on. But the gist of it will be out of the way. Uh, we're about to start summer school, and some coaches. I know we've been on a break, but our coaches will be more of away from football scene for a little bit. And then, um, you know, when we get back, uh, kind of in the middle of June, end of, like towards the end of June, we'll start breaking these opponents down, like Western Illinois, and get ready to prepare for them. You know, moving into this next season. Coach Willis, thanks for taking a trip down memory lane in the film room with us. All right, thank you, Ben. Appreciate it.